Well, hello everybody, it's Mary, and it is 1 o'clock Eastern Time on Thursday, which means it's time for a Facebook Live video. I'm just going to double check over here off to the side that I've got good video and that I can see folks as they start to join. It looks like I do. All right, so here's our card for today. Now, to begin with, I just want you to know that I am using what is possibly the most gorgeous paper I have ever seen. It's called Hues of Happiness, and it is brand spanking new in the new 2022-2023 catalog, which I think most of you have by now. If you're one of my customers, I assume that you've gotten your catalog. If not, and you think you ought to, just let me know so that I can send you one, please. All right, so this is my friend Nioka last week, or the week before, I can't remember, It's starting to lose, I'm starting to lose track a little bit, sent me a really pretty card like this, which, thank you, Nioka, if you're on. Hey, Rosie. Hey, Brooke. And it reminded me of a cool tent fold that I had uh, forgotten that I liked, so I decided I would make another one. So that is what I did, and I've used the Flowering Rain Boots. Now, I have some bad news. I just got done... Hey, Marva. Hi, Denise. Hi, Shirley. I just got done um, printing out all the labels for my new dies and for my new stamp sets, and this was not in it. What that tells me is unless something changes or there's something weird happening with the way Stampin' Up! is giving us information these days, this is not carrying over after the June to January to June mini catalog goes away. So if you love this set, and I think you should because it's adorable, this would be a great time to get it. So then with the addition, the addition of my old things that you can get right now, I've got a couple of things that you can't get. The first is the Hues of Happiness DSP. And this... You just tell me if this isn't gorgeous. I'm not sure I have every single design right here because I've been cutting on it a little bit. But, I mean, seriously, look at these colors. Look at the look at the flowers. My goodness. They're just gorgeous. I love it against the Knight of Navy. Really, really beautiful. And then, of course, we have the design that I've used for this card. And because I love the DSP so much, I'm going to make it the same exact card but with a whole different color scheme. Okay, because I want to and because I can. Hi, Janie. Hi, Karen. Hi, Joyce. Hi, Penny. Hi, Vicki. Hi, Connie. Hi, everybody. Uh, Debbie, hello. And Angie. So I also used what I think is going to be a workhorse, real workhorse. This is the Fabulous Frames. Again, it's in the new catalog, and I think you're going to want it. I've used this big frame die again. I used it previously on another card, but uh, this one is going to be completely feminine. So there we go. Let's go ahead and get started. Everything will be on my blog tomorrow, so you don't even need to take notes or nothing. Just watch. Hi, Faith. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Julianne. Appreciate you joining. So you can see this is the front of the card, and it is a tent card. So it's really, literally just a tent card with a, a bridge between the, the front and the back. So it's very, very simple. It's just the addition of one piece of cardstock, which means that if you don't want to make it a tent card like this, just leave this piece out and you'll have a regular old card ready to go. Now, I'd probably, if you do that, I'd probably put this on the inside, but that's just me. You do you. All right. So here's the front. Every storm that comes also ends. And then on the back, rain or shine, I'm here for you. And the beautiful tulips from the flowering rain boots finishes it right off. Okay, so let's get started. Here is the color palette that I am going to use. I picked this DSP because I had to. It's gorgeous. Let me get these things kind of um, situated, situated here. I've got my envelope ready to go, and I've got two pieces of the DSP. This is on the other side, and I'm going to use this side up, and my tent piece, and then a Knight of Navy um, card base, but this is not going to work. This is not going to work. Hang on just a second. Let me uh, let me get a different one, one that doesn't have a an already cut in it. I did not even notice that when I pulled it out. The downside of keeping a whole lot of cardstock is that sometimes you screw it up. All right, so I'm using a Knight of Navy uh, base and tent. So the first part is obviously just it's a eight and a half or a four and a quarter by eleven, and I'm going to score it at five and a half. Pretty normal. Now the tent piece, <clears throat> the part that makes it stick together like an easel, is going to be three and one quarter by four inches. Okay, and on the um, four, on the three and a quarter inch side, we are going to. Score and fold at three eighths, 
one and five eighths and two and seven eighths. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start. It's easier. Let me just say this about that. It's easier to do a three eighth inch score coming from one side or the other from the outside. Okay. It's really kind of hard to get. At least my fat fingers don't want to get in there. So what I'm doing is I'm doing three eighths and then I'm just flipping it 180 degrees and doing three eighths. Okay, and then we're going to split the difference three and a half, three and a quarter, so one and a half plus an eighth, so at one and five eighths. Boom. That's all there is to that. Hey, Debbie. Hey, Susan. Hey, Carol. Hi, Ann. Appreciate you guys all coming. Okay, so if you look at how this is, you can see that these two three eighths inch scores are, are folded as valleys. And the center score line is folded as a mountain. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll just get that turned over and give it a good score. And then get this turned over. Probably the hardest part about this card is keeping the spatial which way is things going to go piece together. Okay. But it's doable, I promise. If I can do it, you can. Okay, so now, as you can tell, we want to put adhesive on this face of this fold, okay? Because you can see, maybe you can see that. Can you see that it's adhered in there? Yeah. All right, and I'm going to use tear and tape adhesive. Here's a little trick. If you like tear and tape, a trick to make it easier to deal with is to slide it onto your hand like so between your thumb and your forefinger, and then you can hold the end just like that, and lay it right down. Okay, and then give it a little tear. That must be why they call it, you know, tear and tape. And then we'll do the other side. And then we're gonna put it aside because I'm gonna do a little decorating on the card front and the back before I make the tent. Okay, so that's ready to go when we are. And now we'll fold up our card base. And I am going to adhere these two pieces, one to the front, one to the back. I want to make sure this is pretty straight. Pretty straight. Remember, we all score. We think we're doing it all straight, but you want to make sure. Okay? All right. Thanks, Linda. Hope it'll help. Now, I'm going to go ahead and use a little liquid glue. A little liquid glue. Let me put this out the way before I have an accident. I mean, I hardly ever have an accident. <laughs> yeah, no, that's not true. I have accidents all the time. I mean, really, seriously, look at my fingers covered with glue. It's terrible. And I'm going to put the darker Knight of Navy part up towards the, towards the fold. All right. And I cut it just the tiniest smidgy of a widgy bit littler than four and a quarter by five and a half, okay? Because that's likely going to help me when it comes time to trim, and I don't have to trim. What happens is you make this score line at five and a half, but when you, when you fold it, you lose a smidge. So that's what I did. I took a little, you know, smidge off the edge. Now we'll do the same on the back. I learned this making the sample. It's way easier if you do this before you put the whole thing together, just saying. Just saying, just saying, just... I love this paper so much. You know, we've had a lot of beautiful papers. We still have a lot of beautiful papers, but this one is particularly loverly. Really, really love it. Okay, so there we have a front and we have a back, or we have a front and a back. Just, it really doesn't matter, does it? Okay, thank you, Catherine. I know this is a beautiful suite. Now, here is my DSP, my Hues of Happiness DSP, and I've also cut a frame. Again, this is with the Fabulous Frames. It's the largest one. And so what you want to do when you're going to frame a anything is you want to cut it just a little bit smaller than the inside of the frame. So what I did was it is three and a half by four and five eighths, which actually is just perfect as the inside of the frame, okay? Gives you enough overlap that you can deal with it, but not so much that it's, um, that you're gonna have to trim. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is adhere this to the card front. 
Oh gosh, this paper is so pretty. Let me straighten that out just a little bit. Therefore, it also really helps when you're trying to make things straight is if you make your card straight with the world. Okay, just, you know, I'm just saying. You can make it as hard or as easy as you want, but let's go ahead and just make it easy for Mary here today. Okay, now I'm going to take some um, foam adhesive strips and use these to pop this frame up. like so. Let me get this out the way. I love this card because really you can go either way. If you're in the mood for a fun fold, you can modify it to be a fun fold. But if you're not in that mood, you can not do that. And then I'm going to cut these two pieces down. Obviously, I knew where that was, or sort of, because I'd already cut some for the sample. But, you know, it really was just a matter of measuring. And that was a little long. So maybe I should have measured. You know what they say, measure once, cut twice. So it's really better to measure twice, cut once. But it's gonna be all good. It's all gonna be good. Thank you, it's beautiful, isn't it, Vicki? I love it, love it. Let's put that aside. And then I'm going to adhere this over the top. You know, the truth is you could even, if you wanted to, I don't know why you would, but if you wanted to, you could skip the entire boots thing and just put a pretty sentiment and call it a day. I mean, really, it's it's that beautiful. Now, I'm going to pull this to me just a little bit. So if I go out of frame with it, I apologize, but I'd kind of like it to be sort of straight. And I really can't do that when it's out away from me too much. Now, you, you do have a little bit of wiggle because you can just lay it on the card front without pushing down, and you should be good. And I think I want the top to come to the left or to the right just a little bit. There we go. Like that. Okay. Yes, I think that's good. Ooh, I love how that white pops. So you can already see that it's going to be still beautiful but different, I, and I, I love that all with the same exact DSP. Now, what I noticed when I made my first one, <laughs> so I'm like pushing, putting it, pushing it down, and this kept popping up, and I'm thinking, gosh, that's not good. What have I got? Well, I hadn't taken the, the cover off, so I was reaching under there with my Take Your Pick tool to try to get it off. Okay, so let's set this aside. I've got another couple of uh, die cuts made, and these are from the, they are from the, Rain Boots Bundle. For this one, okay, let me tell you the colors here. For this one, I used Mango Melody, Granny Apple Green, and Melon Mambo. For this one, I'm using Pool Party, Granny Apple Green, and Fresh Freesia. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to use a little liquid glue and adhere these pieces together. I cut them all out with the dies from the uh, Rain Boots die set, which also sadly appears to be leaving us. And then I'm going to put my granny apple green stems on here. And you kind of just want them straight. I mean, when I make a bouquet nine times out of ten, it's completely like... <coughs> yes, adhesive strips in our catalog. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. And then I'm just going to put a few little dabble dots of glue on the tip of each of those stems and then adhere my Fresh Freesia tulips. There we go. You know, tulips is something I have not attempted to grow. And this is why, this is what I don't understand. Why do the places sell tulip bulbs in the spring? If you, if you plant them in the spring, do they come up the same spring? Because I always thought bulbs you planted in the fall and then they came up in the spring. I, I don't know, it's very confusing to me. It would really help if I was an actual gardener not a wannabe. Now this is going to sit on my card front like so. So what I wanna do is I need to make the difference for the dimensionals, right? So I'm gonna put dimensionals here, here, and here, and not under the, well, the foot of the boots. Okay? Sarait, sarait, okay, 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 okay. Let's see, we got some dimensionals here. 
and that's going to be away from the frame. So here, so these are going to lay over the frame, which means I don't really want dimensionals there because that will make it kind of lumpy bumpy, just saying. Kind of lumpy bumpy. Thanks, Carol. And let's see, I don't want to go too far down, so I'm going to put them right there. And while I'm, st well, here, this one could, this could stand one. There you go. Got to get my dimensional quota in, even if I'm not doing a card front. So do kind of a test to be sure that you've not got dimensionals where you don't want them, and you do have dimensionals where you do want them. I do indeed have all of those things that I just said. So we'll pull these covers off. Dun 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 dun. Okay. And then we're just going to adhere this in place like so. Exactly like so. Just make sure that the bottom of your boot does not go past the bottom of the card front. Just saying. You know, you do you, but that would be my recommendation. All right, now I have a 3 8 inch wide strip of basic white, and on that, in... Let's go with pool party. Yeah, we're going to go with pool party here for our sentimente. We'll see. If I don't like that, I'll just change it, right? Hey, Suzanne. Thank you so much. All right, get that inked up good. And, ooh, everybody hold your breath. Think straight thoughts. And hold it a beat to get a good image. And it came with it. Perfect. You know what? I think we're going to use... We're going to use... You know what we're going to use? We're going to use... Let me try it with fresh freesia and see if I like that. How about that? Okay? I'm going to try it with fresh freesia. If I don't like it, we're going to go back to the pool party. Isn't that cool? You can just change it up however you want. Just change it however you want. Hello, Ethel. On your way to Savannah. Nice. Nice. I hope you're going to get to eat at the pink house in Savannah. That was I could eat there every night for a month, and then I would have to have an entire new wardrobe. Because, you know, because I would have to have an entire new wardrobe because I'd be so fat. There we go. Yeah, I think that's going to be the color we want. Okay. I do believe that will be our color that we want. Alrighty. Now, I'm just going to trim the ends of this just a little bit and then make a little banner. Now, y'all could use the banner punch the um, pick a banner, pick a punch, the banner pick a punch. Sure, say that 12 times fast, good luck. But for me, this is just easier because it's so small and such a little banner end required that it's really pretty simple. Okay, so there we go. And then this is going to, s oh man, oh man, oh man, oh man, oh man. Darn it. Okay, I'm gonna do it again because I smeared it, it with my fingers. I smeared it in with my fingers. Okay, now it's really going to be critical because I got to get it exactly right or I'm going to have to cut another piece. Everybody, silence, please. Silence in the gallery. Okay. Okay. Y'all hold your breath. Hold your breath. Okay. Whew. Now, trying not to smear it again. Thank you, Eunice. I appreciate that. Yes. Yes, Vicki, a much better color. But I need to take my little bone folder. When you cut, you know, there's a wrong side of the cut, and that's what I'm using right now, which is fine. Just take a bone folder and kind of roll down the edge, and that will help it, help it think about what it's done and get back where it belongs. Okay. Now we're going to put this. I like it right across that seam right there. So I'm going to put a dimensional right there and nowhere else. Right there in that one spot and nowhere else. No matter how tempted I may be, I am not putting another dimensional on this strip. Nope, I'm not. I'm going to put a little bit of liquid glue. <laughs> hey, Angie, it's 
I, I depend a lot on luck. I really do. And six and a half times out of ten, luck does not fail me. All right, we're going to put that on as straight as we can get it. There we go. And I did not put any embellishments on. I just thought that was just about as pretty as I needed it to be. Okay, so let's go ahead and make the back. And then we're going to make our tent a piece, our tent a piece. Now this piece of basic white is the exact same dimensions as this DSP, so three and a half by four and five eighths. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna play with the colors a little bit because I want to, good Lord, here we go. I'm gonna stamp my sentiment in fresh freesia. And then I don't know if there's such a thing as light blue tulips, but there's fixing to be on this card. All right, I've got rain or shine. I'm here for you, and we're going to put it in the middle in fresh freesia. And then we'll do some stemmels, some stemmels, some stemses in granny apple green in the corner to the corner with you, stemses. Okay, now here's the here's the rub. Let's see what we get if we do. I'm gonna do pool party tulips here. I could do the fresh freesia, but that's gonna be a lot of fresh freesia on here. So I'm gonna do the pool party. We'll see how it looks. I do still have another side to play with, I think. So hold your breath. Let's see how these look. Let's see, get them lined up. It's pretty easy to line them up. Now you'll notice that my tulips are stained red. I have no problem with that. A lot of people get real head up, but in fact, I like it better when they have stained a little bit. Sometimes with a, with a lining up stamp, I will actually stamp it a few times in something red so that I can um, stain it because that way I can see it a whole lot easier. And you know what? I actually like that. I'm going with it. I'm riding with that, because that's gonna look really good with the color palette on the back. So I'm gonna open my card up, like so, and I'm going to adhere this to the center. Remember, I put that piece of DSP on there already. Now I'm gonna tell you on the first card, let me just show you something. I used Mango Melody. Mango Melody is not one of the listed colors in the middle part of the catalog for this DSP. It should have been Daffodil Delight. But actually, I think it looks pretty good, don't you? I want to check something, though, without, without inadvertently putting the um, catalog on camera. I'm going to check one little thing. I want to just check something. I'm just checking something for you, okay? Ah, so here's a little trick for you that I just now thought of. When you're looking at the suite in the catalog on page 109, it shows Melon Mambo, Daffodil Delight, Granny Apple Green, Pool Party, Night of Navy, and Fresh Freesia. But when you open it up to the DSP section in 132, it gives all of them. So you've got Coastal Cabana, Daffodil Delight, Flir Flirty Flamingo, Fresh Freesia, Gorgeous Grape, Granny Apple Green, Mango Melody, Melon Mambo, Mossy Meadow, Night of Navy, and Pool Party. So Hues of Happiness really, really gives you a lot of play with the color, right? Okay. Now I'm going to take another one of the Fabulous Frames frames, and I'm going to adhere this one with liquid glue. May I case? Of course you may case. Of course you may case. Everyone may case. Please case. Case me if you can. Ha! Ah, that's... That was a joke from Catch Me If You Can. Remember that movie? Do you know that was an actual guy? I saw him on the news the other day. I mean, I knew it was in the movie. I knew it was because they said it at the end that he was an actual person. Really, really smart guy. But they had him on TV the other day. There we go. What do you think about that? So that is pretty, pretty just as it is, right? But let's play a little bit and make it into a tent card if I can do this without messing up. So remember earlier, we made our tent mechanism. And if you look at it like this, it looks sort of like a flying seagull. If you look at it like this, it looks sort of like a 
upside down flying a seagull or a W. So sort of an M, sort of a W. <clears throat> you're going to want to adhere it so that when your card is open, it looks like a sort of an, a W, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull the cover off the tear and tape. And I made this a little bit shorter than the actual card base. On the first one, I made it exactly as wide and it became quite the, uh, quite the trick to line everything up. <clears throat> so you can see I have, I have it tucked like that and then I'm just gonna lay the edge like so. And I'm gonna lay it pretty darn close to right at the bottom and centered like that. And then I'll pick up the cover on the other piece. Thank you, Carol. Pick up the cover on the other piece. Goodness. So I'll say it one more time. Pick up the cover on the other piece. There we go. Gosh. And then just close this down like so. I like using the tear and tape because, I mean, this is kind of a high, high movement area and that means you have some good stability. What's fun about this is that it's so pretty. It's so stinking pretty with that beautiful DSP. And I'm not patting myself on the back here. It is all the DSP all the time. But it's easy, easy, easy to stand up and easy. And it looks good from either side, which is awesome. So let's go ahead and make us a pretty quick uh, envelope. We'll do an envelope because even a fun for a fun fard. Even a fun fard. <laughs> Even a fun fard needs a fun envelope. <laughs> All right. Jeez. Look at me cracking myself up. Okay. I'm going to put the um, stem doohickeys down in the corner in Granny Apple Green. And then I will put the flower doohickeys. Oh, you can do it. You can do it, Sharon. I know you can. It's very, very easy. And the good news is, is if you chicken out before you put the tent fold in, you you may have wished, may, actually just make a decision before because having the sentiment and stuff on the back of a card that isn't the tent would be really kind of funny. You would be like, mm, yeah, I don't know how to explain that to my recipient. All right, we're going again with the pool party and boom, chakalaka. Okay. Ooh, I like that. I really like that. I don't know. Are there tulips that color? I don't know. I don't know, man. All right. And then I'm going to put a little more of that beauteous DSP. I can tell. I might as well just go buy another pack as soon as I can because I'm going to be using this paper a lot, I think. It's quite beautiful. This would be a great paper for a one-sheet wonder where you just have one piece of DSP and a, and a sentiment in a pretty label. I think that would be perfect. Get four, six card fronts out of each one, eight card fronts if you do it right. Uh, what was I doing? Oh, yes, putting this on here. Momentary brain. I'm going to, I don't know that there's an up or a down, but this one looks more up and right than the other way did. So, gosh, that's so pretty. Pretty. And then we'll do a quick fussy cut. And we'll be done, Skate. I am so tickled to have two of these cards in these two different colors. All right. Guys, we'll be glad to know. I know because you've been worried. You'll be glad to know I'm starting to get a handle on the chaos that is my craft room. I'm not there, but I'm getting there. And my new stamp and storage came yesterday, so that means I need to get there. All right, look at this. Same card, same DSP, same stamp set, same bundle, totally different except for how they look so much alike, except they're not. So pretty, huh? Hues of happiness. If I did not just put that at the top of your list for the 3rd of May, then I feel like I need to resign as a Stampin' Up! demonstrator because I obviously can't persuade anyone. All right. You guys have a great rest of your week. I hope you will see me on Saturday. By which I mean I hope I will see you, because I will be here, hopefully you will be as well, on my YouTube channel, 7 o'clock Saturday evening. Don't forget, free shipping today only, $75 orders and above. And if you order through me, $100 and above, you're going to get double peppermint. So free shipping and double peppermints today only ends at midnight mountain time, technically 11.59. So don't think you can do it at 11.12.01. It's 11.59. 
All right. Okay, guys, have a good rest of your week. Thanks so much for spending part of your day with me. Ta.